Hey guys, it's Mythos Gamer. Welcome back for game number three of Arkham Horror. Uh, we're going to be adding in our King and Yellow expansion for this game. Uh, we're going to be using the touring performance, so all the new items and encounters will be on top, uh, changing up our game a little bit. Uh, before we get started with our setup, I want to give a shout out to Shishio. Uh, he suggested uh, the investigators in ancient one we should use. I got a couple suggestions, but uh, Shishio had a very uh, thematic suggestion on what investigators in ancient one we should use. All right, our first investigator is going to be Joe Diamond. He starts off with four sanity, six stamina, three clue tokens, and eight dollars. Stat-wise, we're going to start with a speed of six and a sneak of one, a fight of five, a will of zero, a lore of zero, and a luck of three. Joe always starts off with a 45 automatic, a great one-handed weapon that gives plus four to combat checks. He also gets one random skill and two random common items. For his skill, he got the sneak skill, giving plus one to sneak. And when you spend a clue token to add to any sneak check, you get one extra bonus die. His first random common item is the Director's Diary, a tome. During any phase, you can discard this card when the terror level is increased to reduce the amount by which it's increased by one. Uh, this is really good for us in the King and Yellow expansion. There's so many things that increase the terror level. Uh, hopefully, this will help us out a little bit. And his second random common item, the safety deposit key. During the movement phase, you can spend one movement point and discard this card while in the bank of Arkham to make a luck minus two check. If you succeed, draw a unique item. If you fail, gain two clue tokens. Uh, Joe starts off at the police station, which is pretty close to the bank, so uh, pretty good draw for him. Joe also has the hunches ability. During any phase, Joe rolls one extra bonus die when he spends a clue token to add to any roll. Our second investigator, Diana Stanley, the Redeemed Cultist. She has six stamina, four sanity, two clue tokens, four dollars. For her stats, we're going to start her off with a speed of three, a sneak of one, a fight of one, a will of four, a lore of six, and a luck of one. She starts the game with the Silver Twilight membership. During any phase, whenever you have an encounter at the Silver Twilight Lodge, you have an encounter at the Inner Sanctum instead. She has the Trusted Sister ability. During any phase, you cannot lose your Silver Lodge membership. And she also has the Dark Inside ability. During any phase, you gain one Sandy or one Stamina each time a Doom token is added to the Ancient One's Doom Track. In addition, you gain one Clue token each time the Terror level increases. She starts with one random Common Item, Spell, and Skill. For her skill, she got the Expert Occultist. During any phase, you can exhaust or roll a spell check. For a common item, she got the understudy script, a tome. During your movement phase, you can exhaust and spend two movement points to make a will minus two check. If you pass, draw one spell, gain two clue tokens, and discard understudy script. If you fail, lose one sanity. And for her random spell, we got Storm of Spirits. As a casting modifier minus one, costs zero sanity. During any phase, you can cast and exhaust to gain plus three to combat checks and use your lore instead of fight for your combat checks. Um, I'm not a huge fan of spells, but we actually kind of lucked out a little bit. Uh, she has a naturally high lore and uh, only an okay fight. And with this costing zero sanity plus the expert occultist that lets us reroll a spell check, uh, I think she's going to be pretty good in combat. Our third investigator, Lola Hayes, the actress. She starts with four stamina, six sanity, two clue tokens, and six dollars. We're going to start her off with a speed of five, a sneak of zero, a fight of four, a will of two, a lore of four, and a luck of one. She begins the game with the Derringer, a physical weapon that gives plus two to combat checks, can't be lost or stolen. She also gets one random skill, common item, unique item, and spell. For her skill, we got stealth. Any phase you can exhaust, reroll, and evade check. To go along with that, she also got the improv ability. During the upkeep, once per turn, you may discard one of her skill cards to draw a new skill from either the top or the bottom of the skill deck. Lola may look at the bottom card of the skill deck at any time. We'll probably be using this uh, our first turn just to uh, get rid of the stealth ability. It's good, but not at the beginning of the game. So, uh, maybe we'll get lucky. 
For her common item, we got the Ley Line Map. You may ignore all penalties of skill checks caused by environment mythos cards. For her unique item, we got the very nice Gladius of Carcassa. A magical weapon gets plus four to combat checks, plus five if your other hand is empty. For her spell, we got Summon the Beast Within. It has a casting modifier of minus two, a sanity cost of zero. It's a magical spell. During your upkeep, you may cast an exhaust, take Inner Beast special card. If this card is exhausted at the start of your upkeep phase, you do not have to refresh it. This is what the Inner Beast special card looks like. It's a magical effect. It gives you plus one stamina, minus two sanity, plus two to combat checks. You get an extra point of movement. And if it's ever discarded or refreshed, it leaves play or your possession. Uh, this has the ability to basically turn her into a combat monster, uh, literally. And our final investigator, Min, the secretary, she starts with four stamina, six sanity, two clue tokens, and four dollars. We're going to start the game with a speed of five, a sneak of one, a fight of one, a will of four, a lore of four, and a luck of zero. Min has two abilities. First, she has a synergy ability. She gains a plus one bonus to all skill checks while she's an ally or while another investigator is in the same location as her. And she has a team player ability. During your upkeep, Min may choose one other investigator in her location. They gain plus one bonus to all skill checks until the end of turn. Basically, she's a, she works great when you move her and another investigator around together. Uh, they kind of feed off each other and uh, increase their uh, skill checks. Min starts the game with the king and yellow unique item. It's a tome. During movement phase, you can exhaust and spend two movement points to make a lower minus two check. If you pass, gain four clue tokens, lose one sanity, and discard the king in yellow. If you fail, nothing happens. She begins the game with one random skill, one spell, one unique item, and two common items. For her skill, we got the marksman skill. During any phase, you can exhaust or roll a combat check. For her first common item, we drew another ley line map. You may ignore all penalties to skill checks caused by environment mythos cards. Our second common item is the press pass. During any phase, you can exhaust when you gain a clue token to gain one extra clue token. Clue tokens are always important, uh, but especially this game now with a particular ancient one that uh, Shishio suggested we use. For our unique item, we got the Karka's on page. During any phase, you can exhaust either give one item or receive one item from any willing investigator, regardless of where they are in Arkham. Uh, this is pretty good, especially with her getting that press pass. Well, we can kind of pass it around a little bit, uh, help whoever is going to get clue tokens get more. And for her spell, we got another Storm of Spirits. Casting modifier minus one, costs zero sanity. During any phase, you can exhaust to gain plus three to combat checks and use your lore instead of fight until the end of combat. Okay guys, that wraps up our four investigators. Now we take a look at our ancient one. For this game, we're going to be using Haster, the king in yellow. While Haster stirs in his slumber, the cost to seal a gate is eight clue tokens instead of five. It's already hard enough to seal six gates. It's really hard when you're going up against him. Uh, we'll see what we can do. His worshippers are also cultists. All cultists are considered flying monsters, and their combat rating is a minus two. Not too bad. If he does awaken and we have to fight him, his combat modifier is minus X, and X is equal to the current terror level. He also has physical resistance, so we gotta make sure we have enough magical items or magical spells to fight him, if that is the route we decide to take. And for his attack, each investigator must pass a luck plus one check or lose two sanity. It decreases by one each turn. And he has a fairly large doom track of 13. And to make things even worse for us, we're going to be using the King in Yellow Herald. Whenever the terror level increases, we must do one of the following. Either place a yellow sign token on the terror track in the space just vacated by the terror marker, 
which will bring out a blight card or we can place a yellow sign token on the doom track either way we don't win for our starting areas we have joe starting to police station he is the only investigator in east town lola is starting at the arkham asylum she is the only investigator in downtown diana is starting at the general store she is the only investigator in Rivertown. And Min is all the way at the other end of Arkham, starting at the hospital. For our starting Mythos card, we're placing a gate and a monster at the unvisited aisle. Our first gate is going to be to relay, has a minus three to close. And our first monster is going to be a ghoul. A minus three to sneak checks. He gives a plus zero to hard checks, doing one sandy damage. A minus one to combat checks, doing one stamina damage. He has one toughness and the ambush ability. The unvisited isle does start with a clue token. So our clue token is removed, and now we have a gate and a monster there. A clue token will appear at the science building. There's already one clue token there, so we will add one more. For monster movement, the only monster we have is the ghoul, which is a circle monster, so no monster movement this turn. And for the text of our Mythos card, it is an environment card, so it will stay in play. Aldebaran Ascendant. Flying creatures do not move to the sky. Gates to another dimension cannot be closed or sealed. Alright guys, so that ends our setup turn for our first game using the King in Yellow expansion. This is Mythos Gamer and thanks for watching.